here we are for East Side Radio, talking to the beautiful Matthew Raven and Stanley Browning uh, for their show, Fucking Men, which is on at the New Theatre throughout the Mardi Gras season this year. Thanks so much, both of you, for your time, for the interview today for East Side. How are you doing? Good, good. How are you? Excellent. I hear the run's going really well. You're selling loads of tickets. Yeah, great. I think we're sold out uh, tonight and a couple of shows later in the season. So, yeah, they're filling up fast. Fantastic. Now, the blurb for fucking men says, take ten guys, the escort, the soldier, the tutor, the uni student, the married guy and his partner, the porn star, the playwright, the actor and the journalist, put them into a series of one-on-one -on -one encounters and the result is an erotic and confronting and audacious comedy of gay sexual manners. That sounds like one of the sexiest and steamiest offerings for this year's Mardi Gras. Just exactly <laughs> how hot is this thing? And I have just seen the photos at the front of the theatre. It does look hot. <laughs> and how hot's the theatre going to get? And tell us a little bit about what we're going to see in the play. <laughs> Gee, I mean... <laughs> now, John, you play the escort, so perhaps you can come at it from your character's I'm playing point John of view. the escort, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So... Um, Gee, but you know what? Like, I play a prostitute, and I probably have the least amount of sex in the show. I don't know how it's ended that up. That doesn't seem right. It doesn't seem no. right. Obviously, I'm not doing my role correctly. <laughs> um, Do you feel a bit ripped off? And all that research I did, gone to waste. <laughs> um, no, uh, it's, there's, there's a fair bit of butt. There's a fair bit of butt cheek. So much butt. There's a lot okay. of kissing. It's a, it's a pretty sexy cast. Mm -hmm. um, and we all get along so well, and so the chemistry... It's, it's pretty great, I think. Like in the dressing room, there's a lot of like, there's a lot of flirting, there's a lot of joking around. <laughs> oh, hang on. So we, we, the audience actually needs to be in the green room rather than in oh, the yeah. audience. Is that oh, right? Yeah, gee. More fun off stage. Half the show. <laughs> um, but it just means when we come on stage, we just have fun and we just play with it. And um, I think it's coming off really sexy and cute. Yeah. And then quite sad when these relationships don't work out, if they don't work out. Yeah. It's such a modern theme, but the play was written by. Uh, Austrian playwright, uh, well this version is by Joe Di Pietro, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a reasonably modern day tale, but it's loosely based on La Ronde, isn't it? A play by Austrian writer Arthur Schnitzler, yep. written in 1897, <laughs> which coincidentally was made into a film in 1952, a French film I believe. Mm -hmm. So what are the themes do you reckon that carry across those 120 years and from Austria to France to the States? where Joe's from, and all the way to Sydney? Well, or is it just the structure of the original play that's used? La, La Ronde, the original, the original play, was really based around sexual morals within the 19th century and particularly focused on class structure and people sleeping with you know, people from different societal backgrounds. Okay. Um, so I think what Joe's done in this adaptation is he's taken those themes of you know, morals relating to sex and connections relating to sex and just applied it to a contemporary gay dating Brilliant. Um, yep. scene. Okay. So, yeah. Now, the blurb also promises elements of comedy. Now, I wouldn't know, of course, um, but I've always heard and imagined that grinder hookups would be a little bit awkward and disappointing. <laughs> so where does the comedy come in? Or is the awkwardness part of the comedy? I don't know. I'm, the first part uh, of the question. Yeah. I'm going to be on Grindr. So. Yeah, look, my, um, my, my Grindr life is, is inherently awkward just because I hate dating. Yeah, um, it's hard, isn't it? <laughs> I, there, is, there is a certain amount of comedy that comes from, you know, a lot of awkward interactions on stage. Mm -hmm. um, I think in, in your scene... It's so witty. The yeah. characters are so witty and intelligent um, mm -hmm. without fail, really. And so they all have their moments of, like, sharp comebacks and... Um, again, like it comes back to how well we're working together as a cast, you know, mm. we're just bouncing off each other and so the humour comes from that, just the, it's clever humour. Brilliant. Yeah. Good. Okay, now there's a pianist in the cast, and I believe that's you, Matthew Raven. Yeah. Who doubles as a Master of Ceremonies. Mm -hmm. Whenever I hear the word Master of Ceremonies, I think sexy stuff is going to happen. So, <laughs> can we expect live music though too? Yeah. And, um, and how does the role of MC work? So I was called into the rehearsal process quite late. Um, the more Mark, the director, I think, was delving into the history of La Ronde as a play and the dancier aspects of it, the more he wanted to make it more cabaret, more burlesque. So he brought me in to write music specifically for the play. So between each scene change and each uh, you know, connection between the different cast members, I have 
songs written Great. that reflect on also, that. So original stuff. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Okay. And uh, folks at Eastside who are actually sitting on the stage, there's that's a grand piano, isn't it? Uh, it's just not right. Okay, I wish it was a grand. <laughs> <laughs> so Matthew is on the keys live. So you, so you get live music and not only live music, but live original music in the show. So fantastic. And a bit of dance, you were just saying. <laughs> there, so is there, there is a bit of dance. There is a yeah, dance. Yeah, you can call it that. We had, um, yeah, we had a choreographer, uh, the lovely Harriet. She came in, younger than all of us, mm -hmm. came in and bossed us around uh, every Monday for about six weeks. <laughs> I'd love to get her take on that because I think this would be a difficult cast to choreograph. <laughs> <laughs> we, I don't know, well, because we're the waltz partners. Yeah, we, we were, we were so disruptive throughout the whole rehearsal period. It was terrible. Yeah, we were so mean. <laughs> but are you proud of your waltzing now? That's yeah, the it's main pretty good. Yeah. It's I, pretty good. I watched a video back of our first rehearsal, and mm -hmm. um, I'm definitely really glad that Harriet was. You can see <laughs> so the development. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad she was persistent as well. I didn't give up like I was. Brilliant. Now the show's already opened. So far, what kinds of things are your audiences walking away talking about or feeling? And how's it been going generally? What's the buzz? I think one of the main things that people are finding is, particularly with the title, Fucking Man, I mm. don't think people are coming in expecting there to be as much emotional punch underneath mm. a lot of the comedy. Right. Um, and obviously it does have that super sexualized tone to it, but mm. there's just so much feeling within the writing underneath right. it and I think people are really walking away thinking about that. Brilliant. Oh fantastic. Well it sounds like you get a bit of everything with fucking men. Did that come out right? I don't yeah. care. <laughs> <laughs> but I just want to say thank you very much Matthew and Stanley for taking time for talk to talk to us today and we hope the rest of the run goes really well. And uh, back to everybody who's in the studio at Eastside. Thank you very much. Thanks.